I'm Bill Vensel, the Solution Architect with Protivity's Enterprise Content Management Practice. On today's episode of the Nintex Guru, we're going to see how Nintex workflow can be leveraged to receive and process comma-separated value files. Let's get to work. I recently had a client ask me if there was a way that CSV files could be uploaded into SharePoint and automatically processed, extracting the information in the CSV file and putting it into a SharePoint list. So what I did was come up with a Nintex workflow to do that job. First thing I want to look at is a document library that I've called CSV files. And the idea here is that We'll just take a CSV file and drag it onto the document library and then have an in-text workflow process the contents. Let's take a quick look at that CSV file that we're going to be uploading. It's just a simple list of names for our purposes, first and last name separated by a comma. You'll see it's a pretty small list. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Nintex workflow that's going to do the heavy lifting. First action up in the workflow is a web request action. The idea here is that I'm going to actually call back into SharePoint from the workflow to grab the file, and I want to load the file into a Nintex workflow variable. So let's check that out. So you'll see that I'm using a reference from the Insert Reference button called Item URL. Since it's a document library, it is the URL to the actual uploaded CSV file. With a web request, you do need to, and if you're calling back into SharePoint, you will need to authenticate. So I've hard-coded my username and password. You could also use a um, secure store credential um, out of SharePoint. The next thing we want to do is set our operation. In this case, we're going to do an HTTP GET, which is, if you're not familiar with that, that's typically what occurs when you browse to a page on a website. Then finally, we want to store our result into a workflow variable. So I've created a variable, variable called TXT file contents, and it is of type multiple lines of text. Next, what we're going to do is take the contents of the file that we've loaded into the variable, and we're going to then load it into a Nintex collection variable so we can process. To do that, we're going to use a regular expression action. And what we're going to do is split on the regular expression pattern for a carriage return line feed. That is backslash R, backslash N. So pretty, pretty straightforward. If you're not familiar with regular expressions, I'll include a link to a really great regular expression site on the web that's got a lot of great information about it. This pattern will uh, detect carriage return line feeds, and then we'll be able to use that to split the file up into individual lines and load that into a variable. And you'll see here the operation is indeed split. And our input text, this is the actual workflow variable that we loaded our file into. And we're going to store the result into a collection variable, C-O-L, people. Next up, we're going to create a for each loop. So if you're familiar with a loop, um, this is a container action, and everything inside of the container will execute however many times the loop occurs. And so what I've done is set our loop up to run through each item in our collection, our people collection, and we're going to extract whatever item the loop is on, whether it's you know item 1, item 10, item 100, whatever it might be, and we're going to load that result into a text variable called txt person entity. Now, for the good stuff, we're going to take that variable that's going to contain the first and last name of the uh, the the name, and it's going to be uh, separated by a comma. And now we need to split that again. So again, I'm using a regular expression action. This time, I'm looking for a comma. So that's simply just a comma. 
And you can see here I'm splitting again into another collection variable called person names. So this collection variable will just have two items in it, one for the first name, one for the last name. The next two actions are collection operation actions. And all I'm doing is using those to get first the last name. So I'm looking at the person names, and I know that the uh, first item is going to be the last name. So I'm using the pop operation of the, of the collection operation action to grab the last name. And then I'm using the pop again one more time. That's going to get the remaining item, and I'm getting the first name. The very last thing I need to do is actually create an item in a SharePoint list. So I'm using the create item action, and I'm creating the item in the list called people. And you can see here that I'm populating the title field with the first name and the last name. These are the references. All right, so you're, you are familiar with that, right? Item properties. I can grab whatever I want. Here's workflow variables. There's my first name and my last name. Then secondly and thirdly, I'm loading two individual fields. The first name field is being loaded with the contents of the first name variable. The last name field loaded with the contents of the last name variable. All right, and this loop is going to execute for every name or every line of names in the CSV file that I've loaded into my SharePoint uh, document library. Finally, let's just look at the workflow settings. I've got this workflow set, so it's automatically going to kick off every time a CSV file is uploaded into the document library. Let's see this thing in action. All right, I'm back to the document library, and let me go ahead and grab the CSV file, and let's go ahead and throw it into the document library. So I'm just going to grab people.csv, drag it on over, and load it in there we can see immediately that our workflow is in progress. Let me go ahead and refresh the page, and we'll see that it's now complete. That's great. Now, where did the names get populated? Well, I've got my little people list here. Let's check it out. Aha, there they are. So we've loaded in this CSV file. Let me go ahead and open this up again so you can see it. There we go. And here are all the names of the CSV loaded into my SharePoint list. So there you go. A very quick, well, pretty quick, and relatively easy way to process a CSV file. What a great way to leverage an in-text workflow. By using the web request, regular expression, and for each actions, among some others, we can effectively process data coming into SharePoint without writing custom code. For more great content, subscribe to our channel below. And as always, I'll see all of you on the next episode of The Nintex Guru.